written statements. Both Oregon's and Washington's athletic directors referenced the strength of the Big Ten's future. Rob Mullins from Oregon said in part, the stability and exposure of joining the Big Ten is of great benefit to the University of Oregon and we are grateful to the Big Ten presidents and chancellors for accepting our application to join the conference. Jennifer Cohen from Washington added in part, the college athletics landscape has changed dramatically in recent years. We are energized at the opportunity to compete at the highest level against some of the best programs in the country. The move, by the way, by the Ducks and Huskies also triggered yet another one tonight. We'll have that coming up in sports. All right, looking forward to it. Well, the news of Big Ten expansion spread like wildfire across Columbus to new opponents for our beloved Buckeyes. Kyle Beachy spent the afternoon talking to football fans about the change. And Kyle, most folks are excited to switch it up. Yeah, Sierra, it was a little bit of a mixed reaction, but for most of the fans we talked to, they were excited to welcome our newfound rivals out west. And for others we talked to, they were a little bit surprised. What does it expand to, like 14 or so? 18. 18, oh wow. The Big Ten is now the Big 18, and the news came with mixed emotions from fans. I mean, I like it. I don't agree with it. I think it's good for our conferences. We'll see how it goes. Everyone knows Ohio sports fans are sharp, and they gave no shortage of astute observations Friday. You've got the powerhouses out in the West, you've got the powerhouses in the Midwest, and you've got the powerhouses out East. So bringing them together like that, is, I don't think that's good for the fans, number one. And I don't think it's good for uh, the championship game. With cross-country travel seemingly more necessary, some thought it could cause issues for athletes. It's definitely going to impact, I think, to some degree versus, you know, like just taking a bus ride or like an hour or two flight versus like a four plus hour flight. You know, like teams might be more tired. I don't want to say like they're going to use that as an excuse, but it's definitely something. And it presents issues for fans wanting to attend games, too. Fans that want to see the game in person, they're going to have to pay for more airfare, hotel stays, you know, meals, etc. So if you dare to drive a trip from Ohio Stadium to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena or Memorial Coliseum in L.A., that'll take about 33 hours and cover 2,400 miles, even longer if you head to Eugene, Oregon or Seattle to face Washington. It's a business and it's money and uh, it's going to bring more revenue to the school. Even the lower schools, I think about the Rutgers and the Northwesterns, they're going to benefit a lot more. But there's a flip side to every coin. Arizona State alum Jade Hill thinks this is the end of the Pac-12. Now that they're leaving, it's kind of like by default, I think the Pac-12 is going to fold. For the rest of the country, might make it a little more confusing, considering that most teams are like within two conferences now. I, I, I really just don't think it's a good idea, but we'll see how it works. The college sports landscape changing drastically today. But for those of us who love the excitement of it all, can't wait to see what comes next. Local for you at The Ohio State University, I'm Kyle Beachy, NBC4.